what is the role of religion in society? We have increasing lobbyists who are arguing that the role of religion is to run the state. Uh, the role of religion is to set all the examples. Uh, the role of religion is to determine what our public policy is going to be. Those kinds of arguments are being made with more fervor than ever before, and it, I think we need more facts to understand exactly how far religious groups will go to get the right to hurt others. Essentially what the Supreme Court is being asked to decide is whether a federal statute uh, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act gives a for-profit corporation of $3.3 billion in annual revenue the right to choose its health care plan according to its religious beliefs. Uh, and they have those religious beliefs so they can deprive women of certain types of birth control. The women who work for Hobby Lobby were hired under a requirement that Hobby Lobby couldn't discriminate against them based on gender and it couldn't discriminate against them based on religion. So all of Hobby Lobby's employees had to be hired without reference to religion. And the question in the case is actually um, both simple and complicated. It's simple because it's really just a fight between can a for-profit corporation that is very large, does it have the ability to use the religion of its shareholders, its board of directors, and its owners to shape its benefit plans? Or do those employees have rights, have federal civil rights that make it impossible for the employer to shape benefits according to gender and religion? So we're going to find out whether women's rights or religious rights trump, but at the core of this is this misguided statute that provides extreme religious liberty like never before in the United States. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act opens the door for religious groups to challenge a law that applies to everybody. And that's exactly what's happening in uh, the Hobby Lobby cases at the Supreme Court. They filed a federal lawsuit. They say, you can't apply the Affordable Care Act to us because we get the benefit of RFRA. No one else gets the benefit of RFRA. If you're not a religious believer, you can't craft that Affordable Care Act to your own universe. But if you're a believer, you get to argue under RFRA that the whole Affordable Care Act can be shaped to your religious beliefs. In 1993, uh, Congress passed the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. And it was challenged as being unconstitutional. And I took that case to the United States Supreme Court. And in 1997, the court said it was unconstitutional. Uh, but religious believers weren't satisfied. They wanted it again. So they went back to Congress and they asked for it again, and they got it. Justice Kagan was the deputy director for domestic policy for President Clinton. And in that role, she was in charge of shepherding RIFRA in uh, 1997 to uh, 99. And what she was doing was trying to work out a fight between the civil rights groups who had now finally figured out that it's not a good law for their interests and the religious groups who wanted it again after it had been declared unconstitutional. So uh, at one point she's quoted in emails as saying she was its biggest fan. Um, but what we learned from the oral argument is that she may have been the biggest fan of what it looked like RIFRA was in the late 1990s. But by now, she's not the fan of the extreme interpretations of this extreme statute. Uh, no one was thinking that a large for-profit corporation was going to be able to invoke RIFRA as a believer. Instead, the religious lobbyists were always trying to argue there's a small, downtrodden religious group uh, subject to discrimination, and they have to be protected against the big, bad government. This new model of a very powerful corporation that can more than afford expensive attorneys to get what it wants out of the Affordable Care Act was nowhere to be found. So if Hobby Lobby is correct, that they have a right under RIFRA to shape their benefit plans to exclude four contraception measures, then it means that the next employer can ban vaccinations and the next one, blood transfusions. We've been treated this uh, 
a spring to the uh, spectacle of religious groups in a variety of states arguing for state-level RIFRAs that would give them the right to discriminate in the business world. So Arizona had the most extreme version. In that version, it would have given private business owners the right against any form of civil rights law. So they would have had the right as religious believers to trump the anti-discrimination laws against race, against gender, against alienage, and against sexual orientation. And the next morning we'll wake up and we'll find, for example, in Kansas, all of a sudden, it'll be possible for a wedding photographer or for a baker or for a restaurant to refuse to deal with uh, same-sex couples. We are still letting so many people be hurt just because the actor is religious. It's right at the heart of our culture wars and unless the American public learns more about RIFRA and learns more about the way religious entities are operating with it, they're not going to understand what their future is going to look like.